Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Gospel Reflection for this Friday in the first week of Ordinary Time. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel today continues to be from Mark, following on from yesterday, and today is chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, word went round that he was back. And so many people collected there that there was no room left, even in front of the door. He was preaching the word to them when some people came bringing him a paralytic carried by four men. But as the crowd made it impossible to get the man to him, they stripped the roof over the place where Jesus was. And when they had made an opening, they lowered the stretcher on which the paralytic lay. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, My child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes sitting there, and they were thought that, and they thought to themselves, "How can this man talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God?" Jesus, inwardly aware that this was what they were thinking, said to them, "Why do you have these thoughts in your hearts?" Which of these is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your stretcher and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I order you, get up, pick up your stretcher and go off home. And the man got up, picked up his stretcher at once, and walked out in front of everyone, so that they were all astounded and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. The healing of the paralytic is a double cure because he is cured of both sin and disease. And Mark often relates these stories in what you could call sandwiches. That is, he puts one story in between two halves of another story just like we might have the beef in the burger. The link in this gospel, joining the two halves of the story, is the phrase, Jesus said to the paralytic. One occurs in verse 5 and one occurs in verse 11. The scandalised scribes materialise only for the middle bit of the story, which to them seems blasphemous. They are right that only God can forgive sins, for sin injures God's world in a way which finally only God can put right. Yet Jesus not only forgives sin, he also physically cures the man. And the two actions reflect on each other because the visible physical cure is evidence for the invisible forgiveness of sin. So the impression of Jesus' authority continues to grow until the only possible conclusion can be found. This is God among us.
today in our reflection, we might remind ourselves God is among us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining me for our gospel reflection today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we finish this first week of Ordinary Time. But until then, take care. God bless. Thanks, everyone.